Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Adam with the Productivity Academy. Uh, today, we've got some really good stuff. Again, I'm going to go into a little bit of uh, goal visualization. If I can pronounce the word right, I'll talk about it. Uh, had a really good question about end goal visualization, so we're going to talk about that, um, as well as the topic of procrastination. Um, really appreciate those two who asked those questions. Um, procrastination is a big topic, but we're going to kind of get into a specific area of that. Um, also, the uh, third area we're going to cover is some ways to be more productive in shorter amounts of time. But uh, real quick, before we get into that, just wanted to say uh, if you are watching on the YouTube channel, uh, hit subscribe if you want to stay up to date and get reminders about these videos. Um, do the live Q&A, which talk about productivity, process, time management, apps, all that stuff. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you can check out the page, obviously, and come back, check it out for updated videos um, published several times a week. And then you can also check out the website or subscribe to the newsletter to get updates uh, and go to productivity.academy slash more. All right. Um, also going to have an update coming out for Todoist, a Todoist power up. For, so for those of you who uh, work online and use uh, Todoist, I'm going to be coming up with kind of the Todoist uh, power up is what I'm calling it. But um, I use Todoist a lot. I use it to manage a couple businesses and I find it to be really helpful. So I'm going to share uh, my secrets on how I use that. Uh, and how I think other people can use it to really uh, become more efficient and help themselves be more productive with that. So, all right, let's get into it. The very first question was end goal visualization, having problems uh, with that. So I think there's a couple ways to interpret this. And the way I wanted to think about it was uh, not just the literal um, visualization. I think if you have heard about actual goal visualization, you probably heard about it in terms of sports. Um, in terms of you hear about some of these really high performance athletes and uh, people like Muhammad Ali or uh, um, blanking right now, but uh, so many really um, high end athletes have been uh, trained by psychologists like this to, to imagine themselves or to not just imagine, but to think through it. And that's something that's come down and a lot of people have heard about nowadays where you can take a minute and just literally think of, you know, how does it feel? What are you doing? How do you get to that point? not from A to Z, but you know, as you're crossing the finish line and you're winning, how does it feel if you're a runner? You know, can you feel how you're placing your feet? Can you push off? Things like that and thinking through uh, that type of visualization. And I mean, you can do this in a lot of areas too. Um, like uh, let's say uh, you want to own a business that has a million dollars in recurring revenue a year, all right? Just making that up. What, what does that feel like when you get there? You know, what does your day look like? What are you doing? Uh, what does that change your life? Uh, and, you know, you could do this in a minute, five minutes. Uh, and I think it's productive to do this um, regularly to just think through this. And it'll help actually clarify your actions as well because you can sit there and say, oh, wow, you know, I didn't think about this. Here's something else good or maybe not good that, you know, reaching this goal gives me. So in terms of this, uh, what I would say is, you know, you don't have to literally imagine it. You can write this down. And I find one exercise that's helpful for this that I've done myself, uh, if you're not familiar with this, is like the best day exercise. And just take out a pen and paper or, you know, type it on your computer. Take five, maybe even ten minutes and just write down what your, like, imaginary best day is. Just go wild, right? So write down, start with waking up. You know, what time do you get up? Be very specific. What time are you waking up? How do you feel? Uh, you know, do you eat breakfast right away? Do you have coffee? Do you go for a walk? Do you, uh, you know, do something else? And then, you know, what do you do? Do you work on your favorite day? Do you work eight hours? Do you work two hours? Um, you know, do you drink a Mai Tai on the beach in the morning? And, you know, whatever it is. But be very specific. You know, where are you at? Uh, you know, do you travel during the day? Uh, what kind of a house do you wake up in? Are you in an apartment? What, you know, what is it? So I find that to be very helpful. And once you've done that, uh, you know, try it a few times, come back to it uh, once a month and write that out and then try applying that to other areas. So uh, you can take your one goal that you're talking about here or more that you want to visualize and go through that exercise. And I think that that's a very good jumping off point. And then from there, you know, go out and do some reading. I'm not a, a goal visualization expert, uh, but it's something that I have done myself. And, and I agree that it's it's helpful in the sense that it really helps you think through um, what you're going to actually be doing so that when the time comes, um, you know, you're not just like, oh, how did this happen? Or, you know, I'm not sure what I'm doing, that type of a thing. So, cool.
Cool. Yeah, if anyone else has any other uh, great ideas or great uh, maybe uh, uh, resources on that, I'd be happy to hear about that. Uh, so let's move into the second one. So the second question I got was just about in general procrastination. So somebody being or finding that procrastination and putting things off is just their biggest problem towards um, productivity. So one of the first things I will say is you can look up Eat the Frog. So um, I myself haven't uh, read it, and I want to say it was attributed to, you know what? I'm going to look this up. i got a computer right in front of me. Eat the Frog. Let's see. Brian Tracy. Okay, so that's who it was, and I want to say that there was somebody else who wrote it, uh, like Mark Twain or something. Anyways, so if you want to, go look that up. I won't waste time staring at the computer and not talking. But uh, the idea is just saying, hey, if you've got something that needs to be done and you're not sure you want to do it or you're sure you're not want to do it, don't put it off, okay? There, there's also a way of thinking like, hey, if you've got something on your task list and you think you shouldn't or you're, you're telling yourself, I don't really want to do that, do it. That's the task you need to get done. Now, I will put a caveat on that and say you need to actually make sure that that's an important task, right? Don't just do it because, you know, you're like, oh, this task sucks and it has no value, but you do it anyways. But the idea being that, you know, especially for most people in the day, your momentum or your energy and your willpower to keep going is going to decrease as time goes on. So if you do procrastinate, then it's more and more and more likely that you're just going to keep pushing it off. So you want to do that thing at the beginning of the day. You know, you wake up and you're, I don't, I'm making this up, but let's say you've got a spreadsheet, you've got a knockout, you've got some numbers to crunch and you know that you notice, you know, it's once a, once a month activity and you keep putting it off and you're supposed to do it on like the second of the month, then do it, you know, make sure set that timer. And you know, that's the very first thing you do on the second and just get it done. All right. Uh, the other thing is do a little bit of analysis on it. You know, to, what is the result of doing this? Okay. Let's say again, using the spreadsheet analogy, uh, this spreadsheet that you have to do on the second, um, it turns out gives you, um, uh, numbers on like employee efficiency or how productive your employees are doing on their tasks. Well, you could look at that in a couple ways and you can say, well, that might be really important information. But then I would say two more things. What's the results of if I don't do this at all? OK, is it going to cause something to crash and burn? Um, am I going to lose control of my employees in this situation and have no idea what they're doing? Or do I actually, you know, I only have three employees and it turns out that I interact with them enough. I already know what they're doing. So maybe I should just quit doing this. OK, so that's just an example that maybe you can just get rid of this. It depends on what the results are. And then lastly, can you delegate it? Could somebody else be doing these numbers? Can you pay someone? Um, you know, can you bring someone else in? Do you have a partner that can do this? Uh, and so taking a look at that and just saying, if you really hate doing these tasks, then one, what's the payoff for the task? And then two, can you either get rid of it or can you delegate it out? So I think that's uh, some useful ways to start thinking about it. And then, you know, just make sure that it, what you're doing is important and I think that that's part of it too. Let's let's say the task though turns out is important and you still feel like man I just I can't do this or I don't feel like doing it then go back and kind of take in the goal visualization idea say well what does this individual task get me right? It's an action that builds up on other actions or over time on itself and then gets me to that goal. Uh, so a lot of times you can think about it in that way that, hey, it's not just me sitting down and working on a spreadsheet. It's me, um, you know, helping keep track of my employees, helping keeping them gainfully employed, making sure that they're helping do what they want to do so that then I can also offer them feedback. Um, I can be a better employer and then the business will grow, you know, and things like that. Maybe that's the, the end goal so that, you know, it's not just, uh, I got a spreadsheet I have to do. So. All right, good one to always talk about, um, and it's an interesting one to, to to deal with. All right, so lastly, what are some ways to be more productive in shorter amounts of time? Um, I'll offer a really specific one for this. I, it's one that I, I constantly work on, and I think it's more of like a lifelong type of thing that you've got to work on, uh, but that is being focused on what you're doing in the moment. And it can be difficult, especially uh, in today's world. But you, what I basically mean by this is, let's say you've got 15 minutes available and you really, you know, you're like, I can, I know I, there's a task I can do or I can at least do a sub part of a task and, you know, write down the next action item. But it's really focusing in. OK, so you take your phone, put it on silent, maybe walk over, put it out of arm's reach. 
okay, you, you know, put your notes away, you close Facebook, you close your email, and you solely focus on that. And do your best, actually. Those are, in my mind, the easy things to do. The harder is mentally trying to clear yourself out and saying, I'm focusing on this task only. I'm not going to worry about that email I just read. I'm not going to think about what I'm doing in 16 minutes. I just need to deal with these 15 minutes. And when you can do that, and it takes time, again, but as you become better at that, you can accomplish much more in much shorter periods of time without being distracted. So I think that's a really, really effective way. But again, it takes time. Uh, just start working on it. Uh, and then beyond that, I think what you can do is trying to batch tasks. And what I mean by that is, let's say you have these shorter periods of time, but can you rearrange them so that you're working on uh, similar tasks in, in larger groups of time? So like maybe you have three 15 minute tasks, but they're, they're related or maybe they're dealing with the same business. So you do those at this time period. And then next you've got two or three shorter blocks that you add assigned to do some um, you know, some, I don't know, housework, right? So you do those together, you know, things like that. There's ways that you can maximize these short periods of time. So hopefully you found that helpful. Uh, as always, if you want to uh, ask questions or anything like that, you can see uh, productivity.academy slash more. Uh, get signed up. You can ask questions. Hit the Facebook page if you want to leave a comment um, or leave a comment on the YouTube videos. Watch those as well um, and respond to any questions or comments you might have. So Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.